was that the whole quest? Let's see. Or, oh, that's right, yeah. Uh, it took some time because right, uh, I made some changes in the master itself, so I had to change that. Okay, yeah. Uh, I've, I've pushed it on, on a branch in my... <laughs> Sweet. Let me jump over there. Branches. IDX3 source. Okay, cool. Got it. Uh, I I uh, tried like to make it uh, as similar as possible with the uh, JSON and CSV files. Nice. Well, so that it it can work and not throw any errors. Check out the X three. All right, I think I got it here. Okay, yeah. So, okay, so, uh, yeah. Um, so I actually took some of that stuff out when I posted it up there. I should have explained more why. Um, was because I mean, does this? Let's see. Um, where did you get that file from? Like the, I mean the, M. It's just the M. Nest. And this data set. Yeah. Let's find that. And then let's download it here. So, so it can uh, it can be trained using any TensorFlow or Scikit site classification model. Mm -hmm. Oh, it works, or it should. It, works, it should work. It works complete. Uh, it works fine. Oh, great! Great. Let's see. I tried it with uh, different uh, psychic models, and some like some gave wrong predictions if there were less test uh, train training cases. You know, mm -hmm. some needed more training and such. Let's see. Let me copy this guy here. Can you see my screen? Okay. Or should I make the text bigger? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, good. Okay. Also, right, uh, like uh, it, they, uh, uh, the uh, when you when we write the command, like in the terminal, uh, we gave some we give some model features, right? Mm -hmm. We uh, in this case we can't give any model features. We have to like uh, give two source files. Yeah. Um. We can't give any model features. What do you mean by that? Like uh, there are two files for training data. One uh, one contains the arrays. And yeah. the other contains uh, the corresponding numbers. Okay. Yeah. We have to give them both, and uh, using the source file, uh, change them into ND, uh, arrays so that we can train them, right? Yeah, we give the source file, we make them into arrays, and then. But that's what the source does, right? Doesn't it make it into arrays? Yeah, that, uh, that's what the source does. But can we like give two source files at this in the same command? Yes, we can. Yeah. So where is the other, or the other source file would be what the labels? Yeah, the IDX one label file. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. So we can do that. Yeah. Mm. Let's see. And. Okay. Let me just look here. So do you know, let's see, is is the other, where, 
let me just, I'll just download this first and then we'll. terminal catting into the Hey oh. John, can you make the fonts a bit bigger? I, yeah. I can see I'm a problem. Let's see. Yeah, that's better, thanks. Yep, this terminal screwed up. Okay. Yeah, I opened the I catted the file and it got all screwed up. Maybe I'm downloading the wrong file here because this is not the same format. Um, let's see. Do you know where you got the file from? From the first link. Oh, from the first link. Did you just download one of these? Yes, uh, one by one. Huh, okay. Um, what did I do wrong? Um, Did you extract them, uh, the files? Yeah, I mean, I haven't. Let's see. Is it this? Is this the correct format here? This binary format? Uh, yeah, it's the correct format. Okay. Uh, I guess I was used to. I I remember seeing that one file format earlier that was the text-based one. So let's see. I'll just look in source. Uh, there now. Well, source IDX. Okay. Great. Okay. So load FD. We'll just do a quick. Um, okay. So DF of mail list repos sources IDX three. Test integration. Train. Let's 
make sure we have that. the source here um, dx3 uh, I wrote the idx12 it's kind of similar uh, if you want me to push it to let's just do this for now but that's yeah we'll do that 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 would be great later um, let's see reinstall so we get the source on the command line here mm, okay let's see not text IO wrapper uh, open FDRB okay so okay so that's already open so there we're good okay Um, let's see. How did you test this so far? Uh, I have I have I haven't tested it because like the, it it was throwing this error, right? Okay. I have tested it like uh, I made an uh, another file, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not from the FFML, like to test uh, if this was working. Mm -hmm. This uh, struck dot unpack and numpy dot from file. Mm -hmm. And it did load the data. Yeah, it gave the right predictions too. Oh, it did. Okay. Um, let's see. Can you add that file and push it up? Because then I can see. Because something's funny here. It's a, oh, is, sure, I can do that. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, yeah, if you just push it to the same anywhere in the in the repo to the same branch, and I'll pull it down. Uh, okay. So hey, everybody else that joined, um, let's see, so Sudarsan is here, and is that Zero Dust? Yeah, Himanshu. Hey, uh, Himanshu, is that how you say your name, Himanshu? Yeah, yeah, it's Himanshu. Himanshu, all right, I'm John, and uh, you you know, you know, we've talked, and uh, you know Saksham and yeah. Sudarsana from, from, from Gitter and GitHub. Um, yeah, this is yeah. Himanshu, he's... Uh, zero dust and he's been yeah. jumping on here helping us out with the um uh, bunch of side kit stuff recently so yeah thanks for yeah. jumping on it's been great to have you yeah you're welcome let's see right now we're working through um so this is basically what we do with the weekly meetings is we pretty much go through uh we take notes in this document here uh okay. usually just go through what everybody has been working on last week uh what we what we got done what we're still working on and uh then we'll go through um and uh say like okay anything that we're stuck on we kind of try to work through together okay. and then um that's that's proven then we figure out what else do we need to do if 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 uh if you know we're done with something then if somebody's done with something then we figure out what's the next thing we should work on so that's how it works okay, okay. yeah so right now we're working through Saksham has been working on um the uh adding image like models that work with images um so uh right now all of the so we have three abstractions right we've got data sources we've got the models and then we've got the data flow stuff which is kind of the data set generation um and right now the models all the data sources are currently set up only to read um non-binary formats right so images are binary formats so we got to add a new data source to to get the input data in, which is in these binary image formats. Um, so that's what Saksham has been working on right recently. Okay. So let's see. Um, uh, uh, I'm pushing the right now. Okay, cool. Um, uh, you can check it out. Okay, cool. Let me pull. Okay. I missed. 
All right. Okay. So open the file. Okay. Great. Let me run this real quick here. Uh, you can change the relative path. Okay. Yeah. That's a good plan. It's a test. And oops. Okay, and then I'll also like uh, in model fit, uh, you can decrease the number so that it takes less time. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, and you were also using the. Uh, okay, so what? Oh, okay. Oh, the labels file is a different file. I see. Okay. Duh. That's why I should have downloaded the other file. Okay. I do. Yeah, that's why I was asking if like two ah. sources. Yeah. Like, uh, can be given at the same time. Yes. Yes. Because for both uh, the the accuracy and train command, two files are there. Mm hmm. Labels. labels yeah so um okay okay all right so oops Train images. Train images. IDX3. You bet. I might have spelled something wrong here. Let me just copy paste the path. Let's see. Let's try it again. In the Wi file, uh, it should be tests. Blue. Oh, yes, thank you, Tess. Variables, inconsistent numbers of samples. Um, I wonder if I got the file slightly wrong here. Um, let me download this again just to be sure. So all you did was download them and then rename them to not have the GZ extension? Uh, I extracted them. Okay, so you did extract them, okay. That's what I thought. I was like, it doesn't make sense, but okay. Website, whatever you say. Um, so let's do that. Uh, I, I saw like a code of uh, some extraction in DFML, so I thought that in the source file, I'll get it. Ex uh, I'll, yes. uh, the file will come extracted. You will, yeah, you will get it already extracted. Yeah. And I have a feeling we are going to go a bit over today because I think we're going to be working on everybody's, um, like getting into the, everybody's actual code. Um, so does anybody. Is anybody not okay with going over um, time-wise? No, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm uh, fine too. I, I came uh, uh, thinking that it'll take time today. Okay. Um, yeah, because if anybody's not, we'll probably we'll do whoever needs to go first. We'll, we'll hit yours first. Let's see. Okay. Train images. Okay. All right, so yeah, if nobody is, then we'll just keep going. We're stuck in here. All right, okay, so now I've unzipped them. Let's see what this has to say then. Oops. And I don't know if my X server stuff's going to get pushed through, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm on Windows right now, so it's not going to do the matplotlib stuff, but that is fine. Um, Okay, so it works. It read in the data. 
is that yeah. what you're getting there? Is that the right right values to get from the print statements? Yeah, uh, it's the it's third last value, right? I gave for prediction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So let's see. Oops. Come on. Let's make sure everything is all good. Um. Let's see. All right. Okay. So I, my guess is here um, that I just downloaded the files wrong. So that source should probably work. So let's do that list again. Nope. Invalid continuation byte. Okay. Let's look at the source again. So DFFML source um, IDX3. Okay. So I'm just going to read in that. I'm going to look at this real quick here. And I'm just going to copy this over so that we end up with the same stuff. And then we'll see what's up. All right, well, look, exactly did, the same. <laughs> I did the same thing before. Yeah. What? Uh, the same thing I wrote before in the... It's the same stuff? Okay, okay. Yeah, it looks the same to me. I don't know why yeah, it's, the it's same complaining. Stuff. Let's see. Um, what is it complaining about here? It's complaining about the unpack. So, which is the same stuff. Um, that's odd. Let's see. You can't decode byte and position invalid continuation byte. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Okay. So, once again, this is why, um, so this is what we were talking about when when we said that uh, when I was saying that we have um, everything was set up for text, um, so all the file sources are set up to do R instead of RB. Um, so let's do RB here and see what happens, um, and then you'll notice they're all doing write text. So we're probably going to have to make some changes to those guys. I'm not sure if it's going to be that much of a change, quite honestly. Um, because with Python 3, R and RB, it's pretty much, pretty much ends up doing the same stuff. Um, but let's just see what happens here. We might have to monkey with the, uh, with the, uh, if is not defined. All right. Hey, that's good. Um, and I'm actually just going to get rid of this. I'm going to, I'm going to take, I, I appreciate you adding the, the open file stuff. But um, because that needs to get taken away, I think we need to figure out. Mm, we basically the the thing is so we have these sources and we have the context, right? Um, and in this one, there's there's no context because it uses the memory source context. Um, and when um, uh, Sudarsana and and Yash and I were originally doing this source stuff. We found that, oh, we, we have this we have this operation that or we have this command line thing that lets you merge um, source files. So basically, you can take one file in one format and turn it into another format. Or what all this stuff is about is you can take some of the data in one file and then basically duplicate the data. Um, and for right now, I think what we really needed to do is probably create a new source context instead of creating two of the same sources and have them sort of transparently with these sort of class level variables share the data. Um, what we really need to do is just create two contexts um, and probably use a lock file. Um, so for now, we're going to get rid of this stuff in here to just make it make it so that we, we run into hopefully maybe less issues while we're trying to debug this, and then we can add it back um, if, if that ends up being the case. Um, so let's see. Um, let's just dump this stuff here. So uh, open IDX3. Yeah, so. So sorry I, sorry I didn't say that earlier. Um, so dump FD, and then we're just going to raise... Did you? Let's see. Yeah. I have left some things. Uh, I was not sure what to do. Yeah, that's that's cool. Because um, yeah, things like you 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 found you know it got a little things things get wacky when you try to do all of this extra stuff to share the share the files. Um, 
So let's see. I didn't know anything about yeah. Link and Await yep, uh, yep. like a, a week ago. Yeah, you did. So that's you, a good you, thing for me. <laughs> yeah, you've done a great job getting started here, but uh, as you found out, it's there's a lot going on. <laughs> so, all right, it looks yeah. like it's listing all the data. Uh, Six thousand whole repos over my SSH connection. So yeah, that's a too many to list. All right, so let's do head uh, sixty thousand uh, sites, right? Yeah, sixty. Oh, sixty thousand. Yeah, no wonder. Okay, so okay, yeah, and these must be the twenty-four by twenty-four matrices, right? So uh, twenty-eight by twenty-eight. Oh, yes. twenty-eight by twenty-eight. Yeah, okay. So that great. Okay, great. Um. And then, yeah, MNIST. Okay, and this is the row index. Um, is 7,000. Okay, let me just check here real quick again. Okay, so I in range size. Um, just stir I. Okay, great. Um, and then let's just do break here. Let's just, let's just do one to make sure everything looks right. Okay, yes. Number zero ends up looking like this. Okay, cool. So, and then the other thing we're going to do is we actually want to make this back into a regular Python array um, before we push it through. Because uh, while we know that we, we might be working with the scikit models, um, when you and so the scikit and TensorFlow, all the models in there right now deal with NumPy arrays. Um, but of course, there's the possibility that somebody's using something that's not a NumPy array. Um, uh, because you know we can imp we can implement a model using any underlying framework, so we're just going to go ahead and turn that back into a regular list um, before we do this. Um, and let's see, reposter. Uh, okay, and then we'll just check that that is okay. Cool, great. All right, so yeah. Now what's going to happen here is you'll see, right? You get mnist right as the data, but this is. Okay, let's see. Um, I wonder, let's see. So for this file source, right, we, get the, we have the file name, and then we have two, two files, right? So we've got the, uh, the, the labels and the, um, and the yeah, and, and the arrays themselves. So we probably want to add something that's going to be like the uh, feature name or we can just call it feature. Um, and that way we can say, okay, whatever this is, is whatever the config, so self.parent or self.config dot feature. Um, and this way we could call this thing. Uh, come on now. So, oops. So we could do source feature is mnist zero and then we'll see here that wait a minute self config feature it said true that's not right <laughs> um oh because i added a dash so now it should print mnist zero here right so what we can do is we can make the one uh, mnist um feature or mnist data and then we'll add the other source and we'll basically okay uh can you push up the idx1 source um yeah but uh that uh, i can uh, not push it and tell you how it works like yeah yeah that's that's true like, we could just there, that. there are the end rows and end columns uh is not there in idx1 okay it's just sizes okay it's just sizes um Just make everything one. Okay. The second line is not needed in this one. Okay. And then we basically just... and the reshaping is also not needed. Okay. So that's, that's it. Uh, and uh, like the uh, the uh, the data is in the form of a long array of sixty thousand okay. length. So if uh, the self dot mem thing, if you wanna. So self dot mem, we, we can basically just. just... Right, so one second. So magic size, this is fine. And then I'm the sorry, size will be sixty thousand. The size is sixty thousand. Okay. And is that and going to be uh, red that is red from this first unpack though? Yeah. 
uh, and the X data will be a long list of 60,000. Okay, and that will just, if, if I say X data equals MP from file, that'll work fine. Uh, X data equal to, yeah, this this line works uh, the exact, exactly okay. the same. Thing. So we're all good here then. All right. So let's just go to setup.py and we'll add the, we'll add the IDX1 source and prefix. Oh, have you changed the uh, names? Uh... Yeah, I changed the names, yeah. So let's see. Okay. All right, so now what we should be able to do is say, uh, oops, source. Um, this is images. So we'll do images equals IDX3, source images, file name equals this guy, and then we basically do a very similar thing here, right, where we say um, okay. mnist, oh. Damn it, I just said no. I said set no paste, no wonder. All right, set. Um, so this is MNIST label. And then this is train label IDX1. Um, and this is source label. All right. So. All right, so we've got. Um, let me just make this a little more readable here. Um, all right, so we got we're gonna list all the repos, and we're gonna say the sources are label equals idx. Oops. So we list all the repos. The sources are images. The images source is IDX is of types the source type IDX three. The label source is of IDX one. Um, the images file name is the images IDX three. The images feature is the we want to call this the MNIST data, and then the label file name is the IDX one, and the the feature is uh, the MNIST label. Um, Let's see, IDX missing feature. Okay, let's see. Then DFML source IDX one. Uh, what happened? Oh, I forgot to call this one label. Okay, so I'm this data. We didn't end up with, why did we not get the other one? Maybe it's because we did a break. Let's see. Uh, it, it won't it print like 60,000. It'll keep printing. Yeah, well, let's see. And that's why I'm going to dump it to the file. Right there. Um, okay, yeah, that'll take a lot of load. <laughs> okay, so. I don't see. think it'll stop in like yeah. five minutes or so. Okay, <laughs> let's just cancel it then. Um, okay. Yeah, it's not loading the other source, which might be a bug. This used to work, um, but I'm not seeing MNIST. I'm not seeing the MNIST label, right? Um, so maybe it's a bug, but let's find out. Let's just add the break and see what's happening. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Okay, so... 
let's just do log debug. Okay, so we entered memory so both the memory source contexts. Uh, we got IDX one source, IDX three source, IDX one source are both being loaded. Uh, entering IDX three source. IDX3 source, or IDX3 source config, entering IDX1 source. Oh, this is not a file. Initializing in memory to empty dict. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's labels, that's why. All right. Okay, Whew. hopefully this works. I was, uh, I was getting worried there. Let's see. <laughs> I was also getting worried. <laughs> NumPy uint8 object is not iterable. Oh, is that because it's a single value instead of an array? Oh yeah, uh, like it's x date x date of i right, so it'll uh, it it'll be a single value corresponding to that array. Okay. Um, wait a minute. Sorry, x data i. Uh, object is not iterable. Oh, oh, because I try to make it a list, maybe? Okay, there we go. So MNIST label is 5, but it also printed this out twice, which is weird. Um, okay, undetermined, 0, MNIST label 5. So we sort of got what we wanted here. We've got the label and the data, but it didn't combine the two. Um, let's just figure this out real quick. Is it because like they are two different source files? Um, yeah, it's it's probably because it's probably an issue with uh, like uh, if this if it's a single source file, it combines it right. I, like in CSV, it should combine it either way. Is the thing so good? Let me just add to what we did here. All right, let me. Okay. All right, so. Got a different list file. So it should be list repos. So source sources.repos print repo. So they're coming through as so async with repo in source context at repos. DFML. Oh, I think I remember what happened here. DFML source. Sources. Okay, so uh, okay, it's iterating over all the sources. That's what happened. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is what happens. So the thing is, when you call, this is the problem. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So basically. The current way that the sources works is it iterates over all the repos and all the sources. Um, but what we really need to do here is have it say, like, it, it goes through each source and then it pulls out all the repos in that source and then it, it prints them, or it, it prints them, right? But what we really need to do is say, um, is go through all the other um is we want to we want to merge it right and what happens is if you if you ask for a single repo it will go and um, merge merge it with all the other repos that exist so this is going to be fuck <laughs> um yeah what we could do is we can just do this for now um so So for source and self. Okay, await self dot repo. 
repo.src url. And now it'll merge. It should merge them. The problem was it was listing. It's listing. It's going through each one and listing them all, right? So okay, yeah. now it does what we want. Um, I wonder why that was. I wonder if that was intentional for some reason or if we did that for another reason. I don't know. We'll have to make a bug of that. Let's let's put that in the meeting minutes. All right. So it works though now. So now we can you can you can go further and 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 you know take the data and put it into a model now, which is good. Uh, um, like you wanted me to like uh, create a new file under DFFML model scikit, right? Um, so I think I'm not sure if you will need to do that actually. Yeah, um, yeah that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. So. so yeah, because once we've got the image data in, we really should just be able to use the existing models, right, to do the classification. Um, so we can kind of work that out here. Um, uh, it can uh, work with TensorFlow models also, right? So Yeah, so it should work with all the models just right off right out of the box right um so let's just make an issue let's make a so uh, working on so you've been working on the idx uh, one slash three sources um we found an issue with um sources that repos not combining uh uh, repo data from all sources when listing uh, all repos. Um, so let's make an issue for this. <sighs> okay, so source sources not combining repo or not merging repo features from, or not merging repos from all sources when listing via repos. And I'm just going to put this diff in here, and we will deal with this later so that we can move on. And this might be be a longer bug, so we're going to put this in a short, but hopefully it won't be that long. And I'm trying to, so I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've tried, I've been trying to go through and prioritize things, because I updated the um, contributing guidelines. Um, and yeah, last, uh, last week you told us about okay cool yeah so i'm trying i'm trying to do that because i know as people come on and they say oh what can i do um it's not super clear so hopefully it's gotten a little more clear we can talk about that a little bit i don't know if we need to but um all right so so what do, is what was the issue right so uh, if i can do it i'll try yeah so the issue is basically um let's see do you know how to get to the meeting minutes doc just so that we just just let me let me just give you guys an overview on how we get to the meeting minutes doc just just make sure if you go to the main documentation page and then you go to community um the meeting minutes page is or the meeting minutes document or the meeting minutes doc is under that um so you can if you go all yeah, the way down. like uh, can you i always go here right to see what i have or i have to do or okay great do, right cool so like uh, when i open it it's always suggesting uh, it's always prompting me to suggest something oh yeah and once i accidentally su suggested something right and you said thank oh, you. oh yeah, yeah 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 i saw that yeah <laughs> that was so a can while I ago now. change that to default to viewing only oh can i do that let's see um I always have to make sure, right? I don't by mistake. Let's see. I wonder if I can make it um, view only as the default. Um, uh, there was a uh, in mean, advance. Yeah, only view. Oh. Anyone view? You know, with link and comment. Okay. Um. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, let's just make it can view. Yeah, because I guess people might accidentally comment, like you're saying. If somebody wants to comment, then they can open an issue. Um, 
Or they can uh, write it on Gitter. Yeah, they can write it on Gitter. Yeah, let's make a note at the top here. So, uh, document. It's a, it's a good, good idea here. Weekly sync. Uh, this happened like just uh, after like the first week I was with Yash. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I was I was checking uh, the weekly sync meeting minutes, and by accident I clicked something and it went to suggest something to you, and you said thank you. Yeah. <laughs> From accidentally. Um... If you. Please let us know via Gitter or GitHub or another communication medium if there's anything we need to change here. All right, great. Um, cool. So, okay, so I put this. Um, issue up here um, with the diff that needs to be applied um, to fix that issue. Um, and <laughs> that's going to introduce some different functionality from what people were doing, but I don't know if anybody was actually having multiple sources, you know. Um, so we might add some kind of flag that allows us to... Uh, to toggle this behavior of because basically with this break right we're just going to go through the first source and then combine it with all the other sources right so um, whereas with the with the old behavior it was going to go through all the sources but like I'm I'm pretty pretty confident that nobody has been using multiple sources at this point because obviously this didn't work um, so uh, so I think we can safely make this change um, but let's do this like as its own commit um, and and you can you can do this one but let me just just also let me just show you guys how to apply a diff I don't know if everybody knows so I'll just do it um, check out dot dot diff ml source um, source so if we have a diff like this because I've posted some of these in the comments and or in the issues and usually the re the reason why this gets posted in an issue is because we come up with it in a meeting and we're not quite sure if this needs to happen right but so then the next thing that happens is if somebody's gonna go work on this they might go apply this diff um, and uh, and then run the test and actually make sure that this does really work. So if you're going to go apply a diff, you just need to say git apply and then you paste the diff. Um, if I can, okay, yeah, paste the diff and then control D um, and then that will, and as long as it doesn't give you an error message, it probably um, applied correctly. So now you can see that yes, it did apply if you do git diff. Um, so that's that's just all you need to do. And actually, I can if you open a pull request, um, then if you open a pull request on this branch, I can just push that up. Um, but just for future knowledge, um, should I open a pull request for yeah. IDX? Yeah, let's oh, open a pull request real quick. So and then we can just kind of then then we can and uh, I I can add IDX one right now too. Uh, oh, I already added IDX one. Um, okay, so okay. let's see. Um, and then let's let's just do this command again, and then let's put this command somewhere. So, dfml source. And let me move, remove these breaks, and then I'll push this up. It's going to dump them all to the file. Just make sure that this is still working. So. How, like, how, do you know how to like uh, remove a file? I I pushed like the MNIST file. 
Oh, uh, yeah. If you if you just rm the file, um, if you remove the file and then just say git add, and then the file path to it'll say like deleted, and then you just you know put the path to where it was deleted, it'll then show up as green when you do the next git status. I can I can do it here because um, I modified it. But if you just open the port, okay. If you just open the port, uh, then I can push the changes that we just did here. So yeah, okay, so now it looks like it goes up to 5,999, or 59,099, and it's got the label data on it. So yeah, everything looks like it's doing good here. We can try to run the classification. Um, uh, so let's see. And I'll just remove the MNIST. Um, um, and and let me just make a quick uh, docs thing here for so that we can kind of write this stuff down and then we can expand on this um, docs usage. MNIST. Am I spelling MNIST right? Nope, I figured it was not. MST. So, train a model on the MNIST data set and, um, and use the model. So let's do, I'm just going to paste that command in here and we'll call that good for now. So. Okay. All right, great. Oh, this is going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. we, can, uh, we can also add like uh, matplotlib uh, thing. Yeah, that's another thing that would be great to have eventually is is doing some graphing capability or like yeah some visualization capabilities. Um, It'll make it look good. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and especially with all that clustering stuff. Um, that uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Um, Himanshu. 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 Yeah, Himanshu. Um, that you're adding Himanshu. Sorry, I'm, I'm not good with names. It'll take me a little bit. Um, yeah, the, all the clustering stuff that Himanshu just added really benefits benefits from having visualization, so that'll be great. Um, so let's see, curl. Yeah, let me add these commands here. And that way we've just got all this stuff sort of where it needs to be, and then I'll push this up and we can move on to the next thing. Because um, I think the next thing for you, Sarksham, is going to be, um, I'm kind of I'm kind of going to leave this leave this out to uh, after the meeting. You can go play around with it, but I think you should be able to use the Psyche classification models. Um, if you use these same source flags that we gave on the command line to list repos um, to the uh, to the as the sources of the classification models, I think you should be able to get this working. Um, and then if you could update that documentation uh, thing that I'm adding right now, um, I think I think we should be pretty much all the way there. Um, so let's see. The documentation. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch. Oh what? yes. So I'm just adding. I'm adding the. Uh, uh, oh, the document. Yeah. Uh, a file to show. Okay, okay. okay yeah. So. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna. We need to write, write like how to go about it because it's a little different from everything. Yeah. Else. Yeah, it is. Um. So. Yeah, but I think so. I think the next step here is, and I'm just gonna write to do. Um. Look. At the um classification the or 
use the same source flags we used with list um, to the train accuracy and predict commands oops commands of a scikit classifier um, use the same source flags we use with the train predict, predict commands with list of train scikit classifier to get to come up with a more example commands for this doc. All right, and so that's your next thing then. Um, let's see. So I'll add that guy up. And then did you create a pull request off this branch? Yeah, I'm just creating it right now. OK, cool. Um, and so then the other thing is that, uh, well, I'll wait until you're done with that. Um, and I'll show you real quick here how to do the add the deleted file. Uh, I uh, deleted the MNIST file. Oh, OK, you did. All right, great. Uh, I, uh, I uh, looked it up on Stack Overflow, and they said, like, delete from git cache or something. Yes, yes. So. Okay. Um. I've uh, created a pull request. All right, great. Let's make sure this is good. Uh, so let's see. Because I just pushed up those changes. So this. So um, we need to make sure. Or let's see. Uh, so this. You you basically continue doing the stuff, making sure that this all works, and then we're gonna circle back on this change. Um, to the source stuff here um, where we changed it to RB uh, and make sure all the other uh, sources, JSON, CSV, are still working uh, with this change. Uh, we probably also need to um, change the uh, various compression Uh, openers from RT to RP. Um, so that'll be something you'll have to look at. Um, so, and then let's see, okay, IDX1 looks good, looks good. Um, this is 
done. Okay, and then here's the so just yeah, add add to this file once you figure out those commands um, with the classifiers, and then and then um, and then figure make sure that this all still works here. And you'll I mean you you should you should see hopefully hopefully the uh, the the various CI stuff will, will come in and, and say what's going on. Yeah, okay, so it looks like it might not be working given that change, um, but we'll figure that out as we go. So, cool. Is there anything else you need to talk about, um, or does that give you sort of okay. enough enough to go full steam ahead on for a little bit? Uh, I can, I will work on this. Okay, cool. but uh, like you mentioned me on some issue, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that uh, was um, that was this issue here. We had talked about loading image data from files, like regular image files. Um, I'm not sure. I guess I, would, I don't know if we really want to do that right now, given that you know this stuff is in the 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 IDX format. Um, this was more of like, okay, we wanted to load a PNG image, right? And the the file name was listed in the CSV file. Um, so in that case, this is kind of I think we talked about this last week, but in, this yeah. was the case where okay, the file name is listed in the CSV file. When the CSV source loads the file, it needs to know that it should go and actually read that file from whatever the file name in that column is, and then import the data. Um, and in that case, I I'm not quite sure, but I'm I think that we're going to have to actually do the image decoding um, or we may want to have a flag that does the image decoding to convert it from the uh, from the compressed format of like PMG or JPEG or whatever into the raw byte arrays um, but we'll probably we probably want to we will probably want to table this for later um, so I might change the uh, I'll change the milestone here um, cuz yeah if you've got this IDX stuff working that's good enough for the NIST to set and uh, we really just want to you know, make sure that the image stuff works for now, and that we can move on to like you know other images later. So yeah, for the other thing, like for generalizing this thing, uh, not limiting to MNIST only, uh, we have to like make some changes again in the source file. Yeah. Too. Yep. Yep. And that'll probably, that's kind of this issue. So we can probably circle back on this once once this is done. So okay, sure. Sweet. All right. Sorry. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, this is great. Great progress made there. Um, so, let's see. Um, uh, okay. So, you guys. Okay. You guys are still on. So, the. Um, let's see. Sudarsana. Um, the. Uh, where is that? Where to go? Where to go? Um, Let's see this guy. Um, yeah. So I think that what what was I think that part of what might be stumping you is that we might have missed this change of self dot value um, should uh, just be value. Yeah. yeah, I made the change, but again, I'm facing an issue. Like, oh, okay. uh, can I share my screen. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Uh, are you able to see my screen now? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, first time when I run the test with the changes that I've made and also the uh, value part, like it says dict object has no attribute directory. Ah, uh, okay. So let's see. Can like, I see the changes that you made? Uh, yeah, it's the same change that's there in the pull request. Okay. Uh, yeah, I so know. I think, let's see. Yeah, if you go to that file. Yeah, so if you remove the self dot from that, I think that will work. Because oh. I think oh, I was God. just trying to sh say that, like, because uh, you had the else statement, and I was just saying we could remove. Sorry, I made that way too confusing for, for what uh, I was no, trying to no, say. I'm sorry. No uh, but then, so uh, after try, that, yeah. so say I make the dict to like normal dict. Again, it, it threw an error saying the file can't be created. I'm trying to find where the error is. Oh, oh that's yeah. because you need oh to run these guys you need to install um where is that? Um you'll need to install ooh, let me pull it up. You need to install this command line utility um because that thing is actually running an external command line utility. 
uh, okay. called so this uh, talkie or uh, I don't know how to pronounce it yeah <laughs> um, that is how yeah I think that's how you pronounce it I'm not sure either but ah, I don't have that documented <laughs> I'm sorry let's see that okay. should have been documented um, let's see okay um, let me make a new issue real quick for that um, and I'll point you to the documentation right here while we're at it um, sure Let's see. Yeah, I documented under like the usage example, but that's not a good place for this. It is not a good place for this at all. Um, it's like very yeah, I was buried. wondering what talky is. Like I had no idea. Yeah. I thought maybe I missed the file. <laughs> Sorry, no, this is it was way too buried. Uh, it shouldn't be this buried. Um, where was it? Um, okay. Maybe it's not a, uh, oof, it might not be documented in here either. That's a big problem. Uh, let's see. I have the data flow. Oh, it's under data flow deployment. No, that is not where this should be. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, this is not good. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So let me put this in the meeting minutes here, and I'll put it in. I'll put it in this link here too. Here, I put it in the chat. So you really just need to. It's a single binary that you can download from the releases tab, which is nice. Um, okay. So nice. let's see. Um, let me make a new issue for this. Let's see documentation. Uh, feature uh, uh, so document okay so um i stopped screen sharing so uh, yeah. You could share. yeah yeah oh, okay so uh well, how about can you can you if you go install this, we can. Um, yeah. Uh, what is the command? Uh, let's. I so let's see. Um, where is it? It's been a while since I've installed it. Um, okay. um, One second. I will get the commands here. Uh, installation. Okay, let me just get the commands for you here. I did, they don't have them documented. I'll figure it out. Um, Linux, new one, canoe. Come on, let me copy the link. Okay, so. Cool. Sorry, yeah, I gotta, I gotta figure out what it is because they don't have it. Documented. Okay, so it's okay. Tar X V Z. Okay. Yep. Sweet. Okay. Let me just make sure this works. Sweet. Okay. Got it. Um. Let me put it on the issue here. So, console. Okay. Uh, we can't see your screen. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not sharing. There's uh. Let me just put yeah, it in I'm here. Sorry. Okay, yeah. so here, I put a new issue for, because um, I need to document, and I put the installation instructions there. Um, okay. So that, uh, I'll try right away. Okay, yeah, you try that, and then, um, and then while you're installing that, um, let's talk about, yeah, one, let's, yeah, let's talk about um, the, um, uh, the scikit stuff, the mm -hmm. clustering, and all that. Okay. 
So um, let's see, where's that pull request? Um, so I could add clustering models. So yeah, um, hey Manchu. Um, yeah. So let's see. Uh, okay, so it is randomly generated. Okay. I just I'm just seeing your. Oh, okay. This is. Let's see. Yeah, I fixed that, but okay, uh, I'm not done with the integration and unit tests because uh, they are failing in some of the cases for a few models. Yeah. But, uh, the problem with the size size of the area. I'm trying to fix that. Okay, so, cool. And I see that. Let's see. Okay, wait a second. Um, okay, so I see that you added in true cluster to features. Um, what? Let's see. I just. It looks like you might have just pushed something. I haven't got a chance to look at this. Yeah, okay. I guess let's just. I'll just ask you since since I've got you here. So the estimator type. Um, I was just wondering why are you using the git atter on that? And because I thought I'd seen that all of these have the estimator type of cluster. Uh, no, this is to. Too... Sorry, you cut out there. I, I can't hear you, sorry. Can you guys hear him? Uh, no. No, I can't hear him. Let's see. Um, let's see. Can you maybe rejoin? His internet might have dropped. Let's see. All right. Uh, did you were you able to install Taki? Yeah. Uh, so the thing is, it's not letting me to like move Taki to user bin. So is it fine if I uh, move it to user local bin? Yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter where you move it, um, as long as it's in your path. Hey. Um, okay, sorry, sure. we we lost you for a second there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I lost the connection. No worries. Okay, yeah, so I was asking about the, um, the, let's see, where was that? Um, the, uh, oh, yeah, the estimator type being cluster. Um, is it always cluster? But I just, I ran the coverage and it looked like it was always cluster. Uh, yeah, this, uh, actually, I was thinking of uh, adding other unsupervised models. Also, oh, okay. Like, so for that, we need to add the... Oh, okay, then we'll need that. okay, great. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to know what was going on because it seemed like it was always taking that branch. So didn't want to add code that's not needed. Oh, and then the other thing was if you're using git atter without a default type, right, it's just going to be the same as doing um, self.clf dot uh, estimator type. Unless, are you getting like the... I was just wondering why you're using git atter there. Uh, okay, I I I know that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, that one is just it's just you know it's 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 there's no reason not to do it really. It just mm -hmm. it just uh, you know convention wise might as well keep it all sort of consistent. Um, yeah, and uh, one uh, one another thing, um, we need. Uh, I was thinking of adding a test case because not all the estimators have this attribute. Okay. Yeah, that's a good plan. That's a great idea. So we'll have to we'll have to add one test case to check whether the estimators Sweet. are correct or not. Sweet. Yeah, I'm always I'm always pro more test cases. Um, <laughs> let's see. So let's see. Okay, the trans. Yeah. Okay, I was looking at all these transactive models yesterday. I was reading all of it, making sure I knew what was going on yeah, here. So yeah, what? So Rahul and I were talking about this, and we weren't quite sure. I haven't gotten a chance to read your comment yet. I didn't see this. Uh, 
predictions made on tra calling fit trains of data, as well as predicts output as labels for training data. They don't have a predict method. This will probably have to be documented informing the user about the methods which need to have prediction data, same as training data. Okay, yeah, so I think what we were saying here is when we, when we went through and we were reviewing this, right, we saw this and we thought, okay, it looks like Right. Obviously, with the predict method, what happens is you're going through and you and you you put in the repos and and you're asking for prediction on these individual repos, and if these certain right, if these transductive ones can't actually make, my understanding is is they can't actually make a new prediction on data they haven't seen. Right. They really have yeah. to like sort of refit on a new data set. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so in that case, in that case, it almost seems like, and, and well, like as as you've seen here, and, and we've we've talked about it a few times, like we're trying to simplify this. Basically, we have this simplified mm -hmm. interface because that makes it easier for people who are working at higher levels not to really have to care about this stuff so much. Like, what okay. it's predict? Oh, I don't know, right? Um, but the nice, the the thing about this one, I think, is that I I I think that we might want to not put a predict method okay. for this guy. We might want to raise like the not implemented error um, because okay. in this case, uh, you're we're basically loading the labels from when it was last trained, right? And yeah. in that case, I think what we really want to do is well, I guess the thing is, I guess what are you, you know you don't get you don't get the labels unless. Um, you don't have a way to get the labels out of it um, just from doing train, right? So uh, actually, actually, I have put one comment in, in the last year, if you can see. Let's see. So I have described all the possibilities uh, what may happen at the. Yeah. If okay. You can see in the conversations. In sorry, where? Uh, in the comments, you can see conversations. So you'll find I have put a very long comments. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Um, so yeah okay but um sorry what line what line just because i think i'm a little confused about what you're talking about it, it, it's it's not in the line if if you can go to the main page uh, oh the, the main conversations page. where you have reviewed oh yeah oh i saw that big oh, okay i saw the email come through okay thank you okay yeah so so i have put for like what are the possible uh, cases there um, and so i was thinking of uh, if it makes sense i don't know mm. yeah so yeah exactly i mean and what we're trying to do here is just figure out what will make the most sense right um yeah. so let's see um that's the challenge when we're doing these abstract things. Is like, how do we define something that is abstract and also makes sense? Um, mm -hmm. Clustering, we can score both the model in supervised and unsupervised way. Supervised when we pass the ground troop and unsupervised when we don't. Along with this, we have two different categories of methods, making a total of four possibilities for evaluating accuracy. Using transductive method with when actual clusters, true cluster, are known. We're expecting the user to add the feature true cluster to the training data, and this will in or this will be ignored in training because we used to calculate the score using okay yeah, because the method is transductive predictions will be made on training data and and there too true cluster feature will be ignored. Okay, um, let me make sure I understand what you're saying there. So using transductive method when actual clusters are known. Okay, so we pass in basically in this this is the case where we know what the cluster should be, we train the model, and then the yeah. accuracy is basically, hey, did you did you find the correct clusters for this set of yeah. input data? Yeah. Okay. Um okay. Um and then using transductive method when actual clusters are not clo not known. That was the original pull request. Um, that was what we were doing there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then using the inductive method when actual clusters are none known. So similar to supervised learning, we add the, okay, um, the model will make predictions on test data and we'll use true cluster to evaluate the prediction using, okay, cool. Um, so, and the inductive would be the ones, so the, in the inductive ones are the ones where we can't, uh, yeah, we we can, can make the predictment. Yeah, we can make the predictment. Okay, yeah. Um, and then so using inductive method when actual clusters are not same same thing with the silver score. Okay. Um, so okay, let me just go back and look at this again. 
Um, let's see. So, yeah. Okay. So in this case, now, okay, now I understand. Now this makes more sense why you were doing this. Um, so the thing is, though, with the tr okay, so with the transductive cluster with predict, you really should be passing in the same set yeah, of same repos. Data. Okay, yeah. So okay, 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 great. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry this took so long for me to to, to parse here, but Rahul and I were like, oh, what? No we were like trying to make sure that we understood what was happening. Here. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so in this case, I think what we want to do is we just need. We really just need to document that this is the case, then. Yeah, this, this um, just needs to be documented. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, let's just let's just document that this is the case here, um, and the okay. documentation for this um, will just go in. Um, let's see, where should we put the documentation? I'm just going to make a note. Let me just make a note here. Um, do you think that okay. this is pretty much what state? Do you think this is? In? Do you think you you've got to add a few more tests, uh, but you think largely it it's pretty functional or yeah like... yeah it's it's pretty functional i just need to add few test cases okay great. And because because there is a change now we have to change the data that we are passing one with a label and another but not with the label so yeah. i have to yeah out all the four test cases uh-huh okay and so basically if we pass this feature data that is true cluster um then we know okay so i'm gonna say there's, there's a slight modification i want to make to this is that um is that uh, like you just saw with the with the MNIST data that we were doing? You know, the feature data can come in as different names, right? And so the reason the reason, the the way that it's set up right now is sort of like um, you know the feature data can be pulled from any source, and it might be some sort of you know already prenamed columns in a database. In which case, that's why we that's why we respecify on the command line every time that we use a model. We do have all those def feature and then the data type because we need to be able to you know give uh, not not be locked to certain names. Um, so I think what might be best here is if we added another property to the config um, that said. Um, you know, it's defaults to none, right? So it, a property that defaults to none, maybe like the, uh, we could do like T cluster or something, and that, that means true cluster. Um, and so it'll default to none. If it is set, it'll tell you which of the features in self.features is the true cluster feature. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, cool. That. And that way, that, that way, if it's not named true cluster already, then, you know, somebody won't have to go change their databases or whatever to, to rename it to that, right? Um, so okay, I'll make perfect. this note here. So let's add uh, another uh, parameter to, to the config um, called T cluster, uh, which defaults to none. Uh, if set, use that feature, or use the string given as the feature name to which is the true cluster. All right, sweet. Um, so let's see. Uh, let me just make a note here, or I'll just I'll just tell him when we get in. I'll get him. I'm not in the office right now. I'm gonna tell him as soon as I get in. Um, okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else in here while I'm looking at it? I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to look at this before we got on the phone here. Um, oh, this stuff we we can take this out. Um, Obviously, right, because it's not doing anything yeah, unless you needed to do this. something here. So, yeah, let's oh, take that out. Um, and then, oh, okay, so the other thing was that. Uh, what? The SHA thing. That, uh, oh, yeah, the SHA thing. thing. I thought, okay, I'm sorry. I, sh I tried to do. Um, 
I tried to, I thought I created an issue last night before I left the office, and I thought I had commented back with the issue number, but I, I apparently something must not have worked. Um, but there is an issue which will be created um, in around 30 minutes from now, uh, which says that we need to have, uh, we basically need to create something. There's, there's this util directory, right? And under util, there's a bunch of random helper functions. It would be good if we created a util slash crypto.py. And in there, we have two functions, insecure hash and secure hash. Um, because right now, uh, I meant to post this up and explain, is that we have, you know, a bunch of variants of SHA and MD5 littered throughout the source code. Yeah. Um, and it's not clear which ones are used for what reasons, right? And so if we basically make these helper functions secure and insecure, we'll easily be able to identify whether this hash is supposed to be secure or whether it's not supposed to be secure so we can audit it much easier. Um, and in this case, of course, this is purely a helper method, right? If you really cared, um, you would set the directory to the non-default and then it would not show up in there. Um, so... Uh, yeah, this is all, all, all of this hashing is purely so that people can run the command line commands without having to set the directory, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to post that up there, um, and, and, and for now, you know, use, use, it doesn't matter, we can change it, um, but I'll post that issue up and we can, we can do that. Um, I might just add that code and then you could, uh, uh, we, we can merge it in as is and then we'll go through and change them all. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Um, is there any other questions you had for me on here? I might have some more for you. I'm sorry, but I, I didn't get a chance to look at this yet. This, it looks really good. Um, I'm very excited about this. <laughs> this is going to be really cool to have the clustering support. Um, cause we were, we've been talking for a while about, oh, what are we going to do with unsupervised stuff? Um, oh, the other thing was... Let's see, this feature predict hash, this is perfect. Um, I, can we move this into, um, let's move this into psychic, psychic context. Yeah, because uh, you know, the one that's there, I can't remember what it is exactly. Um, where is it? Feature predict yeah, hash. Only yeah, the predict it's not using there. enough. Yeah, exactly. So we need to be using the one that you have there. Um, yeah. And in fact, we might want to even up level that to model context eventually because, you know, that's, yes. yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, so, so let's, let's move that. Let's overwrite this guy um, and use the one that you've okay. done. Um, and I believe there might have even been an open issue to go fix that. So I'm not sure though. But yeah, cool. Great. Looking great. Um, is there any other things you want to talk about on that? Uh, yeah, I will probably have to finish the test cases first. Okay. And then I will see because I'm planning on adding the other unsupervised models also. Okay. Like the outlier detectors and all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Um, let's. Yeah. That that sounds good. Um, we usually try to get things in sort of like in uh pretty concise changes if if possible. Um, so okay. if you could, like, uh, I guess, you know it. It really depends. If you see a lot of things changing in this file um, while you do those other ones, you might as well wait, right? If you think it'll mostly stay the same and you'll just need to edit it a little bit, then let's uh, you know get the pull request in and then get it okay. into the main code base because then other people can start you know uh, adding to it as well. Because um, I've noticed we've gotten a lot of people jumping on recently, which is great. Um, and so the more stuff that, that we have in the master branch, the less people might accidentally uh, clobber each other. Um, okay. so yeah, basically just, you know, whenever you think, whenever you think it's, 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 uh, it's stable enough that you might just be adding little changes on top of it. Let's try to get the pull request merged and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, but you know, if, if you do think that it's going to be sort of very in flux while you add these other kinds of models, then, then yeah, let's just leave it open. Um, okay. let's see, uh, where was the thing I was looking for? Uh, I had something I was looking for. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. So. Viewed. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. I need to post. I just add this. Need to post issue about hashing. All right, great. 
Um, okay. Um, all right. So, yeah. If that's all, then um, then let's jump back into the uh, the um, uh, the issue about. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so John, like uh, I ran the test again. So it failed uh, saying the dict object has no attribute dic directory. So I tried again making it to the old structure how it is so that at least the rest of the things goes through like uh -huh. well. Yeah. But I'm getting a OS error saying uh, exec format error talky. So I am. Oh not sure oh, you need to oh crap. Uh, you need to do uh, uh, you know chmod plus x. Um, okay. Path to for which talkie. file? Uh, wherever the talkie binary got downloaded to, or wherever you put it in lo user local bin. Oh, user local bin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Fine. Wait a minute. Why did that work for me? Um, that's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Make sure if you do file on it. Um, it should say, you know, shared object, dynamically linked, yada, yada. Um, and then if you do stat, it should say, um, you know, it should have the execute bits set. My guess is the execute bits are not set. Yeah, most likely. Yeah. Okay, so I changed the, I ran chmod plus x2, that user local bin talky file. Okay. Try, running, try running, the, try running it like this, where you give it the path to your DFFML source. Um, and then oh, like that. yeah and it should give you an output like this um because that's what that's what those things are parsing oh. is this output oh okay uh sorry uh like one minute i just ran the test i'm sorry no worries no worries so uh what is the command talky yeah documents python DFML. yeah wherever you have your source code Yeah. Did it um, come up with this giant thing? Or actually, you might want to share your screen and then we can. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Cool. Okay. okay, the test finished by then. Okay, but it's again saying exit format talkie. I'm not sure why. Okay, uh, what happens if you run talkie? Let's see. Oh, sorry. So just, dot slash, or is it dot slash? Just say talky um, without anything in front of it. Okay. Yeah, just try that talkie. and then dot. Yeah, that'll work. Just talky. Okay, if you just do like talky dot, it might work. Oh, but uh, I should be in the place where documents folder is there, right? Do we uh, have a documents folder? Well, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're in the main source tree, this will work perfectly. So if you just do like talkie space dot. Okay. Dot. Um, I just see the command once. I'm sorry. No worries. Just run that and it'll work. Or it will either work or not work. Okay. Wait, now I can't see your screen, so I forgot the command. Oh, just just hit enter. Uh, it'll it'll probably it'll probably be good. Okay. Documents. Or just, just, uh, just with just the dot there. Doc. No, j uh, sorry, just talky dot, and that's it. And then just hit enter. Oh, okay. Let's try that. Okay, cannot execute oh, oh, oh. binary file. Okay, user local bin talky. All right, yeah. Try doing file and then that pass. So file space slash user slash local slash bin doc talky. Yeah. Oh, oh, because you're on, you're not on Linux. <laughs> no wonder oh. it doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. We need to download the one that's not, <laughs> that's for uh, OS X. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I always just assume Linux. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Where is the Linux or the OS X one? Uh, Apple Darwin. Is that the right one? Oh, Apple Darwin. Okay, here we go. All right, so it's going to be, let me do, let me update that issue real quick here. Okay, 
Sorry about that. Yeah, I should have specified. Okay. Um. All right. Yeah, I updated the issue. Yes. Okay. So now, like, if I do this again, will it work, or should I uninstall the existing talkie? Uh, if you just do this and then move the new one to there, it'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, this is something where it really needs to have, um, and then then just try running the talkie command again. Um, yeah. Now if I do talkie dot, okay. Sweet. Now this Perfect. One. Yeah, there we go. Um, so now should I run the test? Yeah, run the test and let's see what happens here. Okay, wait, where am I? I'm so sorry, I ran the wrong test. No worries. Yeah, probably. Uh, Yeah, the thing is, what's going to happen is, is it's probably going to blow up. Um, it'll blow up on. Oh, and it's cloning the DFFML repo. So one way that we can make this faster is uh, feature. Also now, like it's the uh, way that how repo off directory like within codes as a key. So it's it's in that way only. Like I didn't uh, because yeah. when I changed it to repo out directory throw an error. Yeah, exactly. So. It'll all <laughs> it's all gonna um, it's all gonna bl all the other operations are gonna explode. Um, so yeah. let's see. Um, the other thing is that what happens here? Okay. Oh yeah, so in the in the test file for this, I sort of have a a, a oh, this is this is very hackish and, and just for my personal setup unfortunately. But um, what happens is that if you have something if you go if you have any git repos in documents python in like your home directory slash documents slash python slash test repos, any of the git repos there it'll it'll use those ones. Otherwise, it'll go out to GitHub and download um, DFFML. Um, oh, and that's, that's, why that's why it's slow. So much time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. if you basically just like, you know, you know. Oh, the test ran. OK, great. Oh, it worked. Oh, uh, I'm not sure what is the problem. OK, this is a previous yeah. one. I'm sorry. Yeah, so here it is. I'm yeah, a bit suspicious ran. at why it worked. Um, <laughs> because. <laughs> It's because like it's repo off directory. I didn't change it to repo dot directory, and oh. now it's gonna throw an error if I change it. So here, like if I uh, okay make it to repo dot directory, yeah, okay, it'll throw an error saying the uh, repo doesn't have uh, the same directory. Yeah. So the fix for that one should be though. Um, can you open the file with input? The input class. Yeah. So that should have been fixed by this though, because it should say if the value is a dict and it has a spec, then basically just expand it. Um, so Hello? hey, sorry, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, she might have gotten. Yeah, it tried yeah, to clone the repo and probably dropped her internet connection. Um, but this should work, I'm pretty sure, because you know it basically just says value is a dict, and the definition is a name tuple, right? Pretty essentially, then just expand it. Um, so funny. Um, let's see. I guess let's see. Um, Let's see. No. Yeah. Now I can hear you. Okay. Great. I'm so sorry. No worries. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. Okay. So did it? Hear the test fail. Hmm. Hmm. Can you go do git diff real quick? Yeah. Sure. I pushed everything. Like it won't be. Okay. Any. So it's all. Damn. Okay. Um. What the hell? Um. Let's see. 
Well, it works, but it doesn't work. Um, let's see, pull requests. Um, okay, auto convert definitions. Files changed. Okay, value. Group by spec. Okay, we got rid of that. Dot directory. Um, I'm not sure. I'll pull this down. Um, if you guys, you guys have been on for a long time. I'm sure it's late there. You guys can drop if uh, if you want to drop. Um, uh, no, I have some questions about the tests. I so oh, okay. I I'll wait. Okay, cool. Um, okay, let's see. Let me run the test here. Um, tuple indices must be integers or slices, not stir. Okay, mine is giving me the correct error message. That's weird. Um, what the hell? Yeah, okay, mine is giving me the right error message. Uh, what's going on? Um, Let me come oh, Josh is not downloading the repo from GitHub, right? I mean, it's taking from the documents. Yeah, so I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna comment that stuff out. Um, it. Let's just do this then. Okay, it's still giving me the correct error message though, because you should be getting this error message, right? Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, this is weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe. Let's see. Maybe you need to re. Maybe you need to remove. Let's see. Diff mail entry points. List diff mail dot operations. Or service dev. Service dev. All right. Um, oh, this is like very a huge mess, but let's see. Grab. Um, all right. So if you run this command here, um, uh, I'm, un I'm unable to. See oh, this. oh, sorry. Um, let me just post it in Hangouts here. No, sorry. I'll just 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 run this guy. Um, because all I did was it's just this one off command. Basically, so this is a command that there's there's a few things under the service dev CLI commands um, that are meant for just like working on DFFML itself. Um, and this okay, one. Oh, where is the command? I'm sorry. Oh, it's in the. Oh, it's in that. Yeah. It's in the group? Yeah, it's in. Well, oh, okay, here, wait. I'll add it to here. Um, there we go. I sent it to you on Gitter. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yes. So basically, my suspicion here is that it's the they got installed somehow. Sometimes pip will install things not in development mode. I don't know what happens, but all of a sudden yeah. you'll just be you know going on your merry way, and all of a sudden it'll decide that it needs to install something from in the production mode rather than in the development mode, and. Okay. Uh, what happens is that now any of the changes that you're making, you know, they won't get reflected. Um, yeah. So I would try try that guy um, okay. and see. Can it, can okay. we see your screen? Yeah. So I'll install entire DFML, right? Like not just this one particular feature. Because initially, like when I had this environment set up, I didn't install anything. I just ran the test. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that I mean that should be fine. Uh, can you show your screen real quick? Yeah, sure. Um, yes. Can you see right now? Yes. Okay. Can you run that command? Uh, the FMS service. Okay. But I don't have DFML dev version installed, so it should throw an error, right? Uh, well, this one comes installed by default. 
Oh, oh do you have, or do yeah. Python do Python three point seven dash M and then uh, um, uh, and then the, just bang bang if you do exclamation point exclamation point. Okay. 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 Uh, take off the grep clone. Yeah, and the pipe there. Yeah. Okay. Try that. Okay, so this is basically, yeah, this is just showing you. Okay, that is installed. The The Git features are not installed in development mode, but that really shouldn't make a difference. Why is it doing that? Picked object has no attribute directory. Okay, but DFFML is installed. What happens if you do a PWD? Desktop DFFML, DFFML. Okay, um, what the hell? Okay, um, oh, wait a minute. Ah, here's what happened. Um, this, you see in the stack trace, um, in the stack trace above, it is using the dot eggs directory and the dffml hyphen 0.3.1. Um, so it must have grabbed, well, so up above that, above that. Um, uh, uh, this yeah, one? this above a few uh, the attribute error right above attribute error. Attribute error. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you see, error. yeah. So you see two lines above that um, where it yeah. says, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. So it installed uh, the production version for some reason. Why? I don't know. You have it installed, right? But it went and it decided that you needed the production. You needed the other version installed, which is very weird. But um, it yeah. did it. So I would say what you need to do is you need to remove that um, eggs dot eggs directory. Um, okay. So let's see. That would be yeah. Just do an rmrf. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The um. rmrf feature git dot eggs um, and then do python dash m pip install dash e um, feature git um, okay yeah requirement already satisfied okay perfect yeah for some reason it must have that now try running the command again and it should give you the proper error message <laughs> The, okay, the yeah, test. the test. Yeah, run the test again. Yeah, this is this is like, ah, this happens all the time. Is like, oh wait, I'm oh yeah, wrong, wrong directory. Um, this these weird like packaging issues are <laughs> constant, and I don't know what's what's up, but yeah, pip will just like yeah. install the wrong thing sometimes. Because like I deleted the environment, I created a new environment where I have nothing uh, installed. Yeah. And then I ran the test, and it still installed the. Uh, yeah, like, I don't know. It's like and it, and it, there's even lines in the setup file to say, if the FFML is installed, don't install the production version. And obviously, last time, it went through or like what whatever happened, it went through it and installed the production version. And this time it said DFFML is already detected. So something's wrong here. But, yeah. And I reported it to them and they basically gave me the runaround and they said, oh, it's setup tools and setup tools. Oh, it said, oh, it's disk tools. And it did it again. Um, let's see. Oh no, I'm getting the wrong error again. <laughs> yeah. Um, what the hell? How do we get this to work? Um, feature git eggs. Okay. Can you scroll up a little bit to where what what the logs on the install command was? Yeah. Cause yeah, it shouldn't be it should like it's obviously detecting that that it's installed. Let's see, copying. Wait a minute. Um, okay, yeah, scroll up a little more. This is all the logs from the test still. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Uh, this is all the test logs. Um uh, yeah, keep going. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. here. Um, so it says, using cached date util. Okay, using cached requirement already satisfied. DFFML greater than 0 0.3.1 in. So why did it install it? What the hell? 
Oh, sh- uh, you see, you see that line where it says yes, requirement already yes. satisfied. Yeah. Then. Oh, it, no. Yeah, and then it's going and it's installing it for some reason, like. Uh, Weird. Okay, I'll do one thing. I will uh, like completely remove the uh, environment. I'll create a new environment and I'll try to just install the developer version of it. Yeah. And then run. Yeah, I would yeah. say the best bet here is like if you go on the, especially, I would say create a new virtual environment. Yeah, and then yeah. on the contributing page, I think, do we have a, on the contributing page, if you follow the getting set up to work on DFFML, like create a new VNVI and then, and then do this. And hopefully this will work correctly. Um, but oh. it's a packaging issue, right? Um, it has something to do with the, the development environment. So I'm not quite sure here. I'll paste the link in here. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's, Pip is weird. Um, I wish I've, I've tried to, I tried to add some extra commands and stuff to make some of this Pip stuff easier, but it's still, it's still just a complete mess. So if, if you guys ever run into any things that make this more straightforward, um, I think this is going to be a constant problem. So if, if anybody ever figures out anything that that makes this it makes this less painful, uh, that would be please please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, Anyways, thank you so much, John. I'll try this and I'll let you know. Okay, cool, happens. great. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, thank you. So let's see. Um, all right. Um, and then somebody said, I can't, I can't remember who said they had questions. Uh, yes. Uh, I said it. Okay. So um, I checked, I checked the test, uh, test ran by the bot mm-hmm. and the RB thing is not working for the CSV. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's all right. throwing an error. Let's... Also no module name numpy error. Uh, Wait, no, what? Uh, it's given an error on both the IDX1 and IDX3 files. No module named NumPy. I'm watching. Oh, oh, shit. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, that's because... Okay. Okay. Um, so the thing is, the main package doesn't have any dependencies in it. Um, and that... Yeah, does... you told me, uh, like, uh, yeah. something about... It, like uh, when when I was uh, doing that n jobs minus one error, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you told me that numpy was not there, so I was hesitant hesitant to like uh, implement uh, it, it with numpy. But then yeah. I went ahead with it and told you, and you had no problems. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. I forgot about. I I didn't even. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it. Um, I, so I, yeah, I we can put this in a separate source. Um, or what we could do is I don't think we need NumPy to do this. Um, I think we can just figure out like how to do this without NumPy because right we're converting it. Shaping and stuff uh, yes. without NumPy. Yeah, let's see where it is. Um, Can you share your screen? Yeah, one second here. Um, uh, let's see. Um, NumPy. Um, sorry. Yeah, okay. Let me share my screen. Um, okay. Um, okay, you guys can see? Uh, yes. All right. Um, DF mouse source IDX3. All right. So, struct unpack new byte order. Okay. Um, D type uint8 dot new byte. All right. Um. Let's see. This has something to do with like high Indian and low Indian. Yeah. Uh, binary structure. Okay. Here we go. All right. Let me just go. I'm just gonna go read the source here. Um. Where's the source? Give me the source. 
Uh, and play from file. There we go. Ah, damn it, took me right back. Where is the... Okay. Let's just see what they're doing here. Um, my guess is they're just like reading in struct bytes one by one. Because um, we just want to do that. Core records. File. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Um. FD read into data dot array 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 c array. Okay, they're just making they're just making integers of that struct data type. All right. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Data dot reshape. Oh, okay. Um, size and rows by n columns. Okay, but yeah. They, this looks like too much it, work. <laughs> without NumPy. Let's just make a new um, source. Um, let's just like. Yeah, we'll just make a new, a new source package because all we have to do for that is basically. Um, do you have a file? NumPy has made it very easy for yeah. this to unpack. Service dev create source dfml source idx. Um, and then we take this dfml source idx, dfml source, or then we move it to source idx. Um, and then we take these guys, dfml, let's see, mv dfml source. IDX star DFML source IDX. Um, just put them in here. Um, DFML source IDX misc um, test um, test. Oops, um, test test source. Um, Oh, we're going to need to, like, add the file and stuff. Um, you know. Uh, let's see. I've, I've got, got some code, code somewhere, somewhere to do this. We just need to, like, download the file. And then... Okay, why don't you... I'll, I'll just put this in here. And, um, and I'll push it up to this branch. Um, and we'll have it as, like, a separate thing. I'll go add the package and stuff. Um... It's just, I, I'm i pedantic about keeping it free of dependencies because I have to go through all these hoops internally um, to Intel um, whenever I add dependencies to anything. Um, and so keeping them in separate sub-projects makes, makes life much, 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 much easier um, from a release process perspective. Um, so that's, that's why it's, uh, it's not anything sane. It's a completely insane reason, but... Um, I, I sort of need to keep it that way for my sanity. Um, so I'm so, I'm sorry that I enforce this ridiculous rule, um, but uh, yeah, things things are things are beyond my control that I don't want to spend time fighting with. So <laughs> um, so I will push this up real quick. Um, it's just gonna I just have to move a few things around and go create some tokens on PyPy and stuff. So uh, I'll get all that. And uh, read byte uh, thing. The read it, byte. Uh, it throws an error like uh, iterator should return strings, not bytes. Mm. Oh yeah, you 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 mean with the uh, uh, CSV? With the CSV yeah. source. Um, oh here, oh I didn't read that. Iterator should return string, not bytes. Did you open the file in text mode? Ah shit. Um, okay. Uh, read CSV. Open file. You know what we could do is 
no module name on dumpy yes very good. okay um so i think mm, the best way to handle this might just be to um let me comment on this um so so I'll push up, this is going to be a separate directory, so you can just like keep keep doing what you're doing here, and I'll just push up the separate directory to the same branch. Um, and so I think what we should do is, um, delete this comment, um, within source file, uh, um, come on, view file. So... If we were to take these lines here, uh, actually, I want to go back here. So if we were to take these lines here, right, and make it something like, um, you know, self dot open mode, then we could override open mode within the subclasses, um, and within the IDX source subclass, we could just make open mode. Um, RB, right, um, and that would solve our problem. Right. Uh, the other the other classes would not be affected, um, and and whatever <clears throat> file source uh, is created gets to choose whatever it wants for the open mode. Um, we're gonna need um, so then subclasses can override uh, the open mode. Or I guess this should be read mode, right? Because we have read mode and write mode, and write mode uh, will also need. Um, we also need modes for um, the various compressed, the compressed ones. So we need like read mode compressed and write mode compressed. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Do you see what I'm saying there? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, cool. It, it also make it easy for any other file, so any other type of file source we add in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can just um, override from there. And we could even like do this like, you know, we could we can even make this like, uh, we could we could make a subclass of file source that's just binary file source, and then have these already set, and then subclass IDX source from those. And that way, you know, anybody who's already a binary file doesn't have to keep setting these. They just subclass from binary file source. Um, so let's add that as well. So uh, a new subclass binary file source with those. Uh, properties set um, then have IDX source subclass from binary file source and that oh no fuck ah god damn it it started the review all right well whatever I hate it when I do uh, when you do you know how you can do control enter and it'll usually post a comment well when it's a pull request it makes it a review and then it's like now you've got this whole review going uh, but yeah okay so let's just do that um, and uh, and that should you know I think that 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 will keep the CSV source and JSON source as they are and then anybody who wants to create a new source it'll pretty it'll be pretty straightforward for them to create a binary file source versus a regular file source so all right. Is there anything else on here? And I'll push up the. Uh, I'll push up the. Let me make a note of this. I will push up the. Um, the. The. Create the, the. The package with NumPy, and I'll set up all the Py, PyPy keys for it and stuff. So, we'll create different source IDX on PyPy and push to IDX source. All right. Cool. Sweet, sweet, sweet. We're very, we're very close to having those images then. Yeah. Um, also, like uh, uh, the command you used in the command line for training the model, 
Oh, uh, I didn't train the model, but I was just saying if you go and look at the, um, if you look, if you basically use these, this right here, yeah, as the sources. So if you go and you go to like, um, let's see, models. If you go and you went, actually, you could even use the TensorFlow models, maybe, but like this, these arguments, right? So replace the sources arguments in the example command line flags um, here, right? Like sources, replace these arguments with um, this, and you should you should just be good to go. It should just feed the data through. Um, so it's probably, I mean, ideally, this you can get the classification working by doing, you know, passing this as the sources, and then you'll just need to do like model predict. Instead of to predict, you would do um, MNIST label, and then for features, you would do MNIST image, right? Um, and then you'd have to do like def, um, uh, you'd have to do the def colon MNIST image colon, and then you'd, you'd want to say like bytes, and then colon something. I'm not sure. I don't think it even matters in this case um, because only the TensorFlow models actually take that last uh, value. Um, so for the TensorFlow models, you'll have to figure out like what is the value there um, that is required. But for the scikit ones, I think it'll just work. Um, but that's sort of what you need to figure out next. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Um, does that all sound good? I'm sorry, we went like way over here. We're like an hour and 15 minutes over, so I'm sorry. I know it's really late for you guys. It's 12.45 a.m. Dang, wow. Well, you guys are true engineers, yeah. <laughs> thanks for thanks for staying on. I appreciate you guys. Uh, it was great to sync with you guys. I think we made a lot of progress. So. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, then I will uh, let you guys get to sleep. Sorry for keeping you so long. No problem, don't go. Thank you. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.